very well was stable, not using drugs, not using spies, attending church, no legal difficulties. Um, was he hypersensitive to abandonment? Yes. Um, and did the spies make him paranoid? I think at the end it did. Um, he began using spice sometime in the late spring, early summer of 2014. And he used incredible amounts of spice. He says up to five times a day. At work, he would go outside on breaks to use spice. Um, he had used it that day. And if you look at his banking records, the amount of money that he's spending at this shop called Time Warp, where he bought spice, increased throughout the summer. Um, up until, I think the, I don't wanna get the exact wrong amount, but in August, um, he spent $230 in the month preceding the offenses. $65 on June 30th, $70 on August 4th, $35 on August 13th, $60 on August 16th. And those are just the ones that you can trace through his bank? Right? Through a credit card, right. I don't know if he bought extra with cash. And you ultimately uh, gave Tim a diagnosis? I did. And what was that? What was that? Um, I diagnosed Mr. Um, Judds with a substance-induced psychotic disorder from spice or synthetic cannabinoids, as we call it. Um, I also diagnosed him with cannabis use disorder, severe, and alcohol use disorder, mild. The substance-induced psychotic disorder. Um, we talked about that in relation to, to these events, right? Yes. And, and what I mean by that specifically is the thought that it's not normal to, to it's not a delusion because it wasn't a fixed false belief, but just to have the paranoid thought that my six-year-old child is somehow going to use an electrical outlet to kill me in my sleep. That's not a normal thought that I think most people in their right mind would think. Right, it's psychotic. Yes, well, I think it's paranoid, yes. Um, what the, and this is a substance-induced psychosis, right, that he was in at the time of the offenses on the 20th. Yes. Um, and that, but for the spice, we wouldn't be here either. I don't think so, but you know I'm not a for, I'm not a fortune teller. Based on everything that you have here, truly I think Spice contributed incredibly to what happened. Um, I'm going to go to i go down to page 19 on your report and talk a little bit about. During, uh, you did a competency to stand trial evaluation of Mr. Jones back in 2016, is that right? Yes. Um, and during that time, he talked about the voices and told you about the voices, right? Yes. And at, at that point in time, and you have a blurb here where he told you he was hearing voices every day throughout his life from the time that he was 10 on, right? That's what he said the first time I saw him. In 2016. I've been hearing voices since I was 10. It's only through many more hours of evaluation that you have to ask him, describe the voices, tell me what you mean by voices, what do they say, and it became clear to me the more you talk to him about the content and, what, and, and how he described them, that what he is referring to as voices 
are not psychotic hallucinations, but they are his own anxious thoughts. I'll give you an example. He told the police officers in Mississippi that the voices started after his divorce or after the separation from Amber. I asked him about that. What did you mean by that? And he said, the voices were saying, what am I going to do? How am I going to take care of five kids? How am I going to be able to work and manage all of this? Um, he said he couldn't concentrate at work because he kept having these intrusive thoughts. I think anybody who undergoes a divorce or many people who undergo a divorce is very stressful. 